uh, some verbs and sites. You can go and see the first for yourself. And I think that sums up by saying, just as lizards hibernate over the winter, emerge from the earth in the spring, mate and the young are born from the earth, and then enter into their life, so the soul or souls of the deceased buried in the grave remain dormant, hibernating, over the winter of their spiritual life. Then, when the ice melts in the spring, the soul emerges from the grave and is born into their spirit world, accompanied by clan effigy water spirit guardians, which provide protection for them on both sides as they journey into the water domain of the lake, which is the site of the afterlife of the water spirit clan. Then, the soul has been born from this life into a new life, as indicated by the alignment of one of the water effigy guardians with the connection with the rising of the morning sun on a day when light and dark are equal, meaning life and death are equal, so that as a separate soul, which is crossed over from this life to the life to come, it can enjoy the pleasure of residing with other deceased ancestors, also alive in the spirit world. And as one chief said, dead, there's no death, just a change of worlds. The Ho-Chunk did believe in reincarnation. This would be a Hindu's view of reincarnation, where the deceased soul comes out, enters into the fetus, goes through the life cycle, and the soul changes bodies as the person changes garments, and that process is repeated until the person has worked through their karma. All right, now we're going to do the same thing at the uh, the English equivalent at the forks of the Manitowoc River. This is actually quite simple too. So remember that we have here 10 water spirit mounds with one conical mound pointing. The water spirit effigy mounds are going in the same direction, pointing away. The feet of the two peripheral effigies in the vanguard point away from each other, forming a guardianship pattern. And specific to this group, the feet of the three water spirit effigies considered a family carry information about inclusiveness and the feet of the water spirit effigies in the vanguard carry information about the branches that form the Manitowoc River. In other words, I've uh, made the case that the three water spirits feet all point to the south and therefore they're probably from the southern branch and yet the water spirits in the vanguard have their feet all mixed up as though water from the northern branch and water from the southern branch is now merged after the the uh, two branches of the Manitowoc River have become one river. Topography. The effigies are placed on the bank next to the river, so there can't be any confusion. These effigies are going with the flow of that river, and the effigies are flowing in the direction of the current of the river. Factor two. The clans are socially separate, so this is the same as with the water spirits at Governor Nelson. Water is the site. The vanguard is more developed than at uh, Governor Nelson State Park. There, there are just two adults. Here, there are five, spiritually. Um, uh, there's the immortality living on in our children is apparent. Uh, death in this, after apparent death in this plane, is portrayed by the two adults and a child. A possible metaphor of rebirth after death is given again. So, when you take factors one and two together, the souls buried in this grave, who are familiar with the people who lived in and around the Great River system, are joining, are journeying with the flow of the river to the Great Lake where the spirits of their ancestors uh, reside and is accompanied by a vanguard of warriors who protect them to ensure the journey is made safely. So I think that is a plausible, simple statement that is, in English, what the effigy patterns uh, mean. Now it's getting more complicated. At the Sly Miguel site, pointing. The effigies are flowing downstream, just as they're flowing downstream at uh, the Manitowoc. Pointing, the effigies are placed on the bank next to the river, parallel to the river, and now in three rows, moving up from the river. Topography, there's at least one snake effigy in each row, giving that clan a prominent place in each domain. That is, the domains are water, land, and air. Now we're adding three new, ish, um, three new principles of placement. First, the, we're adding a third principle of placement, but with three examples. The principle of intentional transformation. The bird and bear effigy mounds are effigy, as effigies form a new pattern which surround and embrace the, owner, the older conical mounds in the center of the construction. So this is a site where there was clearly, even the carbon dating supports it, 
a group of older conical mounds, perhaps a thousand to twelve hundred years earlier than the effigies, and I've shown you how the two adult bears, the little bear, the snake, and the two birds actually embrace it. They were intentionally placed there, I believe, to make that point. Then the largest bear is positioned above and behind the second largest bear, forming a new pattern, mating. And then the conical mounds constructed beyond the effigy mounds form lines or rows, which is another new pattern because it shows the social strata of the clans. We have the birds in the top uh, uh, row, and then we have the bears in the middle in the bottom row, and we have the snakes in all of the rows. So we have the water, land, and air represented as they w uh, appear in the strata coming up from the river. All right, where are they going? The social strata of the clans uh, I've just uh, described. The flow of the river, the placement of the delt bears adds a temporal dimension of past, present, and future, a metaphor of uh, the communication uh, that would be new. The bears uh, mating indicates birth and renewal. The river is also a metaphor of the eternal journey to uh, the life after death. And then spiritually, the birth of the bear cub is another metaphor symbolizing the birth of the clan, the birth of the natural world, the rebirth of the souls of the deceased. So mating and birth, embracing the old conical mounds, offers interpretation that this was meant as a symbol of the renewal of the souls that were deceased there. So the clan, the effigies that embrace the older um, and probably uh, cultures that were not related to the effigy mounds builders because they could have been uh, 12 to 1500 years earlier. Nevertheless, the effigy mounds culture decided that they would join the sacred site and place their souls in the construction and offer a modern, if you like, a symbol of rebirth. So what are they saying at this site? On this ancient sacred river site, stories of our elders tell us that many people from many nations over the millennia have celebrated their life and honored their dead through burial and conical mounds in the floodplain near the river. We also wish to honor them by identifying the three domains, air, earth, and water of the clans of our people. We do this in order to renew the world of the living with the souls of the dead by showing how the birth of a bear cub can symbolize rebirth of our people and rebirth of the souls of the dead. The great river, which has sustained so many generations by enriching the spiritual energy of the site through the annual flooding of the river, is the base upon which we share our beliefs by adding a new pattern to the conical mounds and a new pattern in the effigy mounds. From the river we have constructed three rows which reflect our clan social strata. And from the flow of the river, we have identified cyclic time, which acts to give meaning to the mating position of the adult bears and the placement of the cub through gestational time. These metaphors, cyclic time, mating and birth, are our new way of declaring our social, cultural, and spiritual convictions as we bring a new balance to the world. So we're going to uh, persevere now in looking at the Black Hawk Country Club, which I've described before, and we're going to do it using these two factors. So, just as a quick memory, we have uh, the goose, the hawk, behind the goose aren't shown here, the three bears. We have three conical mounds, three linear mounds, and one water spirit mound number. And that uh, shows how the, the bears are. Okay, pointing. The cub and water spirit point due east pointing. The goose points to the winter solstice sunset and the hawk points to the winter solstice sunrise, pointing away. The two adult bears point away from each other in a guardianship pattern. Topography. The eagle and the hawk are flying uphill, that is they're taking off. Topography. The three bears are surrounded on three sides by water. The lake on the north, the stream to the west and south. Alignments. The goose went to the winter solstice sunset and the hawk to the winter solstice sunrise. So these are just actual direct observations that anybody can make. Uh, the uh, uh, winter solstice sunset alignment is uh, well documented. Okay, where are they going? Well, socially, 
uh, in my view, the three bears form a family. Culturally and as a metaphor, bears hibernate, winter over. Geese migrate, they winter away, spiritually. Bear cubs are born in the den during January and February. The first two Ho-Chunk months are called first bear born and last bear born. The birth of the bear cubs in the den is equivalent or symbolic to the birth of the souls of the deceased in the conical grave. Metaphors, leaving at the beginning of winter and returning in the spring is parallel for the deceased souls leaving at the beginning of the winter of their spiritual lives and returning, that is, being born into their spirit world in the spring of their spiritual lives. And cubs are born in the den in the earth during winter and birthing to the surface of the earth in spring is parallel to souls born in the grave, that is, in the mound, in the winter of their spiritual life, and then being born uh, into their spirit world in the spring of their spirit life. So, what are we saying in English? Since geese and bears both disappear in the winter and reappear in the spring, there is continuity of life over the winter, meaning there is new life from the old with the change of seasons. More, since the bear cubs are born in the den in the winter and are ambulatory when they emerge from the den in the spring, new life comes out of the earth. So, we offer these observations about our animal cousins and our celestial world to indicate that the souls of our deceased buried in the conical mounds on the top of the hill to the west will also be born in the earth in their grave in the winter of their spiritual journey and in the spring of that journey they will emerge from the grave and journey to the spirit land their heaven the bears and goose die at the beginning of the winter but because we know our clan animal is just asleep in the den and that the geese return in the spring we know there is no death for our deceased clan people, just a change of worlds. So uh, I actually think I've said that about as neatly and tightly and analogically as I can. The question is, did anybody in the Ho-Chunk in those days ever think of it this way? Well, first I'll never know, or we may never know, or the Ho-Chunk do know and won't tell us, or the Ho-Chunk don't use these metaphors anymore, or they don't talk about it that way, but somehow this kind of symbolism appears to apply here, and I believe it does. All right, well, so we're going to go to Mendota. We're going to look at um, the sites. This is the one that shows the equinox connection between the western group where the there's the burial mound, the turtle, and other conical mounds where there's a fire relationship with the um, uh, long uh, linear uh, mounds and the three large eagles, the four-legged deer, uh, three bears, and a, a water spirit in the middle. We're going to look at the symbolism of the grave uh, and I'm just going to know of the grave of the people. Sorry, I'm just going the wrong way here. Um, and I'm just going to remind you that in my interpretation, the oval uh, of stones is really meant to be a symbolic egg, and I'm pointing out here that an egg would ordinarily be in the nest, but this egg is actually in the tomb, and this is literally a womb tomb. It is um, a place where the dead are reborn. We're going to look at uh, the eagles, uh, the deer, uh, and then we're going to look at the uh, survey by Lewis of the Eastern Group. So what is the evidence now at the Mendota site? Well, pointing in the Western Group, that's what the WG stands for. The turtle points to the major standstill of the moon set. In the Western Group, the two long linear uh, mounds uh, point to a central conical mound, and when you bisect that angle, getting true north, uh, you get to true north. In the middle group, the deer aligns with the equinox sunrise and walks between the tips of the wings of the two large eagles, and then connects with the conical mound in the eastern group. Topography. Gravity assists for the turtle to go down the hill, uh, below the water, then below the earth. There is an easy slope east towards the middle and eastern groups along the equinox line. Positioning, western group, three bodies seated in a grave facing west. Three thunderbirds fly away from the fox effigies towards Governor's Island where the offering of the buckskin crest is constructed, pointing. Three fox effigies walk towards 
the conical mound of the east, indicating a fox burial. The long linear mounds in the eastern group form an angle of 48 degrees, near a phi relationship. Factor 2. Socially, the deceased and the grave are from the eagle clan, with the child behind the adults and the stone egg between them. Culturally, the turtle, an animal ecologically adapted to the water and land, forms a relationship with the setting of the moon in its longest arc. Spiritually, the long linear mounds form an angle of double phi. Half encompasses the burial mounds and the other half covers the open field. Evidence. Malam would have appreciated connecting the world of the living with the world of the dead. Because the line bisecting the linear mound centers on true north, spiritual energy from the heavens could flood into the arms of the linear mounds, bringing grace to the deceased. With a measured phi on the west side, uh, with the living, uh, no, with, with the, the deceased and the living on the, the east. The conical mound which centers the linear mound then becomes an altar site from which ceremonies like the ones proposed by Malam and by Birmingham and Eisenberg are directed to renew the world. The site then becomes an outdoor cathedral. So what are they saying at the Mendota site? On the highest point of this peninsula we constructed a stone-lined grave chamber and placed in it three important persons in a seated position facing west. We placed a stone egg in the center of the grave to symbolize birth from the from the grave of these Eagle Clan people. The turtle was placed next to the grave, aligned to the moon, in its descent below the earth to show that while the sun appears to go out for those on land, it is actually still shining brightly below the surface. The turtle res resides on land, below the water, and symbolically below the earth. The alignment with the moon is meant to indicate the living presence of the sun after it is set. So as the sun dies at the end of each day, but lives on in the underworld, so too the souls of the deceased appear to be dead, but are alive in spirit land. Immediately to the east, we have built a ceremonial site where we held services and celebrated blessings of the deceased and the living. Our relationship with the heavens, noted through the alignment with true north, was incorporated into the placement of the altar mound with the outstretched arms of the long linear mounds. The Equinox Association was intended to identify the deceased with the eagle effigies, and therefore from the eagle clan. The deer acts to both bless the mating of the adult eagles and signal the birth of the eaglet by extension, the rebirth of the souls of the deceased eagle souls in the spirit world. The relationship with True North and the middle group continues our belief that the souls of the deceased eagle clan have been blessed on their journey to the heavens, the place of the afterlife of the eagles by celestial energy. Finally, the fox burial with the Thunderbird affirmation concludes our belief that on this site we were blessed with good relations with other peoples. Peace on earth. Good will towards pros. Um, if I was a critic of this work, I would say that one of the strengths of this is that it is observable. This is data. You can go and uh, somebody a skeptic can challenge it and, and draw their own uh, observations and uh, the weakness is that I've taken um, and I have built my metaphoric interpretations on a series of previous metaphors some of which may be simply an error or all of them could be off but I found a way for it to all hang together at all three sites using the same if you like uh, metaphoric symbols. So I'm, I'm offering it so people can uh, take a look at it.